there's many different genres going on. You've got the magical and the mythical, which will satisfy many fantasy fans. Um, you've got that reference to the fairy tale of The Little Mermaid, of course, but it's a very different take. And then you've got the hardcore action, you've got some romance, even a tinge of comedy. I mean, relentless nature show watching um, both. So I also watched a lot of mammals in the sea, but also mammals on land because, you know, you can't really emulate fish behavior too much on land. So uh, I tried to find different things from different animals to create um, um, physical traits and um, watched a lot of Bjork because I think Bjork's so wonderfully magical and from a different world or something. So she was kind of an inspiration. And then physically, uh, free diving and diving. Got my diving license in Mexico when I found out um, the show went ahead, which was amazing. Um, and, that, and lots of those sorts of things. Well, for me, it was, um, it was a blank canvas of, a, of, of possibility. I mean, it was wide open for possibility. There's nobody to say, oh, that is exactly what a mermaid is like or not like. You know, with, with any other character, if you play, let's say, a rock star or a drug addict or, you know, you have a notion of what that should be like. But this is, this was brand new. This was like, you just unleash the mind and, and go for it. And especially with finding her language, finding the way she walks and talks and breathes and everything. I mean, what, a, what an opportunity. Yeah, I play a marine biologist called Ben Palmer and some strange things start happening in the town uh, that he can't really explain, kind of ocean related. And uh, they stumble, he stumbles across this young girl uh, who turns out is a mermaid, yeah. And it's kind of about how the town and him and his girlfriend Maddie deal with this crazy discovery. This fits into the sci-fi genre because of what you're dealing with, but also the fact that they try and base it in science in some way, how these creatures could exist. Uh, and they try and ground it in reality as opposed to just delving too, too deep into the myth mythology of all of it. It's more scientific, which is cool. So that fits into the sci-fi category, but there is, yeah, it's like drama too. You're dealing with family drama and relationship drama. Um, and yeah, there's an element of romance, I guess, in there. I think the, my character, Ben, hears this siren song and he doesn't necessarily, he, as a scientist, he doesn't really know what to, to do with this. It doesn't make any sense to him. It's like something beyond what he can comprehend. When we're shooting the underwater scenes, it starts, if, when you see us go into the water, often we're above, we're, we're like actually on, in the real ocean, which is pretty cold uh, in Vancouver. Uh, and then once we're in and underneath, just because you need to be able to see everything. And when you're in the real ocean, the, the, I think the, the salt water and stuff prevents you from being able to see too, too much. Especially because a lot of our swimming seems to be at night too. So yeah, we, we fill, shoot everything in the tank, which is this huge, huge tank that's like a, an amazing, uh, amazing creation that they're able to put together. What I think Siren is about, it explores like what happens when the line between like reality and myth gets blurred. So our show is set in the fictional town of Bristol Cove and you get to see what happens when like myth becomes reality. So the arrival of like a strange girl in town turns everyone's life upside down because you quickly find out she's a mermaid. And for my character Maddie and Ben, you follow them as they're kind of catapulted like headfirst, whether they like it or not, into this like crazy journey. They're so magnetic, the mermaids, and how they've brought them to life that you just want to know like what's happening with them each week. But in general, I think the writers have done such an amazing job to, to keep people on their toes. Like every time we received a 
receive a script every couple of weeks, I'm like turning the pages, like what's gonna happen next? I'm always surprised. You can never like predict what's gonna happen. And I think audiences will like appreciate that, that they won't get to a, the end of a, an episode and be like, I know what's gonna happen next. They won't, that won't happen. I would describe Siren as a dark, sexy thriller um, about a small, close-knit coastal town that gets rocked by the arrival of this mysterious girl. And soon, friends and bodies start showing up, and it's up to a couple marine biologists and a plucky deep-sea fisherman to uh, find out the truth, see where she's, where is she from, who is she, and are there more like her? Personally, I don't think there's anything on TV that's really much like it, because it's 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 definitely thrilling, and there's total horror, uh, I don't know, gnarly aspects to it. But at the same time, it's incredibly sexy, um, which I guess could be a cliche to say, but it really is. And there's a lot of heart in it. Like I think it's kind of dis disarming how much heart and how much sincerity is in the characters and uh, just the human connection. Because I mean, mermaids, of course, mermaids and, and action and all this other crazy, amazing stuff that we get to play in, it really kind of falls flat if you don't have humans really going through things with each other. And I think that's the thing that's really gonna make people love these characters because they are really relatable. Essentially, the series is a, what happens when a real mermaid comes to land and the consequences of what happens when she gets here because unlike other kind of mermaid stories and films and what have you, yes, our mermaids are very beautiful and uh, enticing and intoxicating, but they're also top-level predators. They will bite your head off if you mess with them. <laughs> And I think that's what makes the show so exciting is because it's totally different. It's totally original. It humanizes mermaids to a certain degree and it's unpredictable. There's something for everyone. You know, there's something that will appeal to young children. There's something that teenagers are definitely going to love. And then, you know, I come into the category for the older, more mature audience that actually wants something that's different, that's got their love aspect going on. It's different. I think it has all the qualities, the winning qualities of a successful show because you can't put it in a box. I mean, playing a mermaid is every girl's dream. So right now I am living like every girl's dream. My friends, all of them are like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, they can't wait for it to come out. So um, preparation wise, it was a lot of um, swimming. And I'm not particularly a, a swimmer, you know, I, I grew up in Zimbabwe and we're a landlocked country, so water sports weren't really, I didn't really do water sports, you know, but uh, I did do swimming classes when I was in junior school. Um, when I went to the pool or if it was a pool party, it was more just like, oh, hang out, you know, look pretty, you know, bikini type thing. So it's been a lot of swimming and diving, um, breath holding. So it's a lot of new skills that I've gotten to learn and just, studying animals a lot um, and fish and dolphins because you can't really, I can't put on you know, National Geographic and be like, oh, let's see what mermaids do. You know, you can't do that. So um, it's just been a lot of, yeah, a lot of research. Um, being in the tank was quite an experience. I remember the first time that we, um, that we were in the tank on camera test day was a little bit scary because of course when you're preparing you're in you're in a pool you know it's a pool there's so much space and then you get into the tank and I remember just feeling oh it's so much smaller than I imagined and it's just it's just a very different very different experience so um, I was able to work with you know with the stunt coordinator and with Roberta who's the um, breath holding um, specialist and free diving specialist but so we were able to kind of work out the kinks and, and all that kind of stuff but Working in the tank is actually nice because it's warm, so it feels like a jacuzzi. So you're basically in a jacuzzi the entire day, right? Um, and it's, it was fun. I actually had a lot of fun in the tanks. These mermaids are very different because, I mean, I will tell you straight up, when I think mermaid, I think Caucasian female, blonde hair, blue eyed, you know? So, um, I mean, I, I remember like getting the audition and being like, Black Mermaid? I don't think so, you know? So, but hey, here I am. So, um, very different in that we're not, 
uh, you know, the typical kind of, um, how would you say, eroticized kind of mermaid. Or, you know, when people picture mermaids, they picture us in the little, like, shell bras and, you know, hair and just like, da -da, you know, that kind of thing. Very different in that we're, we're fierce, we're predators. Um, so, yeah, we're very different. Off the marker. We're going to say the same thing as we did the first step, right? All right, speed high stakes. Okay. Here we go. Two, three quarters speed, high contact. Okay, uh, and set. All right, and Okay, and action! <laughs> 